Hello, I am Patricia Estes in Charleston, South Carolina, and this is The Grown Up Church. I'm so excited to be starting this number two, second season of The Grown Up Church, and we are growing up, and it is beautiful. I'm excited to see all the wonderful things that God is doing on the earth and how his people are responding. Will everyone respond? Of course not. But those with ears to hear and eyes to see will respond, and they are responding. And I am excited to be a part of this wonderful movement of the Lord on this earth. And so the title of this podcast today is actually Passover prepare for it. And this is the time of Passover. We're in an Easter getting ready season. We'll be going into the Passover season. And I think it's important for us to stop and just hear some lessons that the Israelites understood and how important it is for us to understand. So there's a lot of prophets and the word of God says God doesn't do anything unless he tells his prophets. And the prophets themselves have been in a great season of honing into being able to hear God and then being able to speak only what God is saying and not trying to go through the filter of our understanding or break it down what it means. Just speak what he says. Let his word be the one that speaks. And we've seen that maturity in the prophetic and it is exciting. And now we're in this new season of messages from the prophetic, from different streams, different places, different nations. And here in our own nation in the United States, there is a word that is coming together. And it's the echo of many voices coming together with a very, very, very strong sound. And it is prepare. It is to prepare. We need to prepare. There is something coming. When is it coming? We don't know. What's coming? We're not sure, but we know something is coming. And so we keep hearing this word, prepare, prepare, prepare. And so what should we do as the mature church? Should we be apathetic? Absolutely not. Should we be afraid? Of course not. But what we should be is very, very wise. And I would like to start by just reading here in Exodus uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, because the Israelites learned how to protect their household and how to bring the blessing of God in the midst of crisis, in the midst of chaos. They learn to do uh, something great by listening to the Lord. So here the story is, the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first of the months. You're to make it the first month of the year. Say to the whole community of Israel on the 10th day of this month, let each man procure a lamb or a kid for his family, one for each household. But if a household is too small for a lamb or kid, then take into account the number of persons the man and his nearest neighbor may take one between them. They are to share the cost according to the amount each person eats. Your animal taken either from the sheep or the goats must be without blemish, a yearling male. Have it in safekeeping until the 14th day of this month. And then all the assembled community of Israel may slaughter the victims between dusk and dark. Then they must take some of the blood and smear it on the doorpost, put it on the doorpost and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat the the victims or the sheep. On the night they eat, the flesh roasted on the fire, they must eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They are not to eat any of the raw or even boiled in the water, but roasted, head shins and entrails. You are not to leave any of it until morning. Anything left over until morning must be destroyed by fire. This is the way in which you're to eat it. Have your belt fastened, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you must eat it in urgent haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I shall pass over the land of Egypt and kill every firstborn of man and beast. Thus, I shall execute judgment. 
I, the Lord, against all the gods of Egypt. As for you, the Lord will be a, the blood will be a sign on the houses in which you are. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you. When I strike Egypt, the mortal blow will not touch you. You are to keep this day as a day of remembrance and make it a pilgrim feast, a festival of the Lord, and generation after generation, you are to observe it as a statute for all time. Wow. What do we see here? So much information for us. First of all, I want to tell you, the Lord loves his people. And when we look at this curse that was going to come onto the land, it was not against people. It was actually against the gods that had been resurrected by people. And you and I have to know that God is a jealous God and that he will have no other gods before him. There's a lot of gods that have been resurrected in our society, in our homes, in our cities, in our nation. And this is what God's coming after, the other gods. And so anything that is above him in our lives, it will fail. And you and I need to know that we need to have God and him alone on the throne of our lives, on our hearts, in our minds, in our itineraries, in our finances, in our families, in the day-to-day that we do. We need to have no other gods before him. Now, there's something very important here. I want us to just break this down a little bit. A lot of times we serve God just any old way. And I think it's time that the mature, grown-up church realizes that any old way just doesn't do with God. And when he gives instructions, he gives like these detailed instructions. And it really gets to me on how he said it was to be done and then be obedient. What if they were only partially obedient? What if they had prepared the lamb, sacrificed it, roasted the meat, had eaten it, but they didn't go into the house? What would have happened? What if they hadn't have put the blood over the doorpost? What would have happened? I believe we would have seen the same disaster that came to the Egyptians come to the Israelites if they were not completely obedient. I believe right now the Lord is stirring us and he's telling us, hey, something's coming and I'm going to give you some instructions before it comes and I want you to be ready. And I want you to do the instructions exactly as I told you. And here in this scripture, There are even instructions on how they were to eat. They were to make sure this is the way in which you're to eat it. Have your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. I believe that it's important that we get ourselves in order, that we are adorned properly for what's going to happen. And this isn't really about what kind of jacket we had, but we need to be spiritually ready in position, understanding the significance of a staff, understanding what these sandals on our feet mean. You and I are people called by God. He's preparing us. And all of this is to position the church, to position the people of God to bring forth this great harvest and be ready for this harvest that is coming to the land. And so there's a lot of things happening. I would like to give some instructions that we feel like we're hearing from the Lord on how to prepare for this season that's upcoming. It is not only a spiritual preparation there. It is also a physical preparation. But first of all, we need to start with our spiritual preparation. How are you maintaining your private, that secret time, that stop everything on the earth time with the Lord? You need and I need to be seeking God like we've never sought him before. We need to pray in the spirit. We need to align our will to the the will of God. I don't know the will of God. No, but Holy Spirit praying through us knows the will of God. And as we are praying in the spirit, we're coming in agreement with God. If you have not been someone who 
prayed in the Spirit. Maybe you have not been baptized in Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and, and that is an experience that you want to have. Please seek Him for that. Maybe you have your prayer language, but you don't use it. You used it one time or two times or three times, but you need to learn how to use your prayer language more. We need this praying in the spirit, this agreement with heaven like never before. So intimacy with the Lord. Seek intimacy with the Lord. So very, very important. Also, the next instruction is get your house in order, get things in order. So in this preparation, they had to know that there would be a time that they needed to have food ready, prepared. And so he said, go get this. It was a sacrifice, but it was also food to eat. And he told them, go and get it and have it ready. And on this day, you're going to need this food. You'll make the sacrifice. You'll use its blood over the doorpost, but you will roast it and you will eat it. You and I need, to, it doesn't matter what the storm is, if it's uh, a tornado or a hurricane or um, if, if it's some sort of ice storm or wind storm or if our electrical grid is hit or whatever the storm is, we need to be ready and we need to have food in our proximity. There's something about this passage that just jumps out of the page for me and it was how every family they were to prepare for their family. And if they were a small family or they were one unit, they were to partner with other small families or one units so that they were all prepared. You and I need to be prepared for our family. We need to make a list of things. What do I need to have in close proximity? I don't have time to run out and buy it. I don't have time to run and prepare. When it's time, it's time. It should be in close proximity. We should be prepared. So just make a list and start preparing. What do I need in close proximity? What food do I need? And what do I need to get as far as water and candles or heat? How am I to prepare that I am not in crisis? I'm in safety during a time of crisis. I'm in peace during a time of chaos. Um, there's a course that's available for anyone. We're going to be hosting it here in Charleston, but you can do it online. Or you can host it in your church, in your business, in your school, and it's preparedness peace, preparedness peace. And I want to suggest that you just go through that course. It's going to give a lot of ideas and thought processes. There is wisdom that is being given now. I'm watching it. I'm watching as ministries are preparing their people. And that's what we're doing. We want every one of our families to have heard wisely. We want every one of our families to have prepared wisely so that in a moment we can shine brightly and be all that God wants us to be. This is a beautiful, beautiful time in the kingdom. And I just want to make some decrees over you because this is the time to prepare Prepare for Passover. Prepare for what is coming. Prepare your family. Be wise because we are hearing God. I decree over you that you have ears to hear and eyes to see, that you are not in apathy and you're not in fear. You are in wisdom. I decree over, over you that you are hearing instructions. You're hearing and you are not only hearers, but you're doers. You're doing exactly. And in a moment of crisis, you are in peace. You are in safety. And what am I hearing the Lord say? Grow up.